Meyer and not having that copy of that. Okay. It's like okay. I need a lot of Okay. All right. Um, welcome to the Quality of Life and Infrastructure Committee meeting. It's February 22nd. Uh, call the roll. I'm Dave Risberger. I'm here. Mark? Here. Uh, Councilman Davies is here. Uh, Councilman Harrington will join us in a moment. Um, did you get a chance to look at the draft of the um, minutes from the last meeting? Any, any questions at all? Concerns? Okay. Um, we have three topics. Um, why don't we, you know what, why don't we go ahead and start with um, Destination Oneana, um, since Scott is not here. So, we just got the, did you get a chance to review their um, stuff that was sent up this afternoon? I did not. Okay. So it's basically a rundown of what your plan is between now and through June, is that right? Um, I think I included some of because of the summer Saturdays, I included some of September, but um, for the most part through just spring and the beginning of summer. Okay. Oh. Okay. Scott, actually, Emily Belko's trying to get in. Oh, hi, I, I got in. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. Sorry. Go no, ahead. it's fine. Um, you may want to introduce yourself in case anybody here does not know. Oh, sorry, I just assumed. Um, I'm Katrina. I am the Director of Membership and Events at Destination Oneana. I'm David Kropp, the um, President this year of the Destination Oneana. Thank you um, for letting us come. So first off, um, the first event that we're going to kick off our season with is um, traditionally the breakfast with the Easter Bunny. But due to COVID numbers this year, we're choosing to um, straight away from that and go the same route as we did last year with the visit with the Easter Bunny. So um, there's an opportunity to take a um, physically distanced photo with the Easter Bunny and then um, they get to go home with activities and um, a little like to go bag just so that we can build a little bit of community togetherness but without literally being together. Um, on the proposal piece that I sent you guys, it breaks down all of the locations, um, social media, and marketing pieces, where our income sources or expenses will come from. Um, and as we get sponsorships, or if we get sponsorships, I should say, uh, there's the ability to add more to those things. So that's where that lies. And then we move into the beginning of May where we'll do a movie night with um, the Huntington Memorial Library. Um, and that'll be um, like a friendly, a family friendly movie versus just a kid friendly movie. We'll still have our kid friendly activities, but we're trying to open it up so that it's a little more inclusive to all ages. And then we have our um, summer Saturday events, which we are, in the process of meeting with the downtown merchants and um, creating a small committee so that we can make sure that we're getting all the right feedback and we have some stakeholders involved as well. Um, and those dates are May 14th, June 11th, which is actually a SUNY alumni weekend. It's the it's just the SUNY alumni weekend, right? So we're going to collaborate with SUNY. Um, Oniana and hopefully be able to do some discounts and bring some people downtown with, into the merchants and things like that. July 23rd, we're talking with um, Cam Hayes, who um, works with Blendos. He's working on a project, so we're hoping to combine. Well, we're not hoping. <laughs> we talked to him. We are <laughs> combining that day with him. Um, the August 13th bun is just us, and then September 17th, we still have to talk with Kano at the beginning of the month, next month, but I'm hoping to combo the summer Saturday street closure with the Arts and Music Festival. Um, on that one, we have shortened the time after reading through the um, survey of stakeholders. We found that a lot of them suggested the time be shortened, so we, um, 
And we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're also going um, away from three sound stages to just one, mostly because we don't have the funds to do three sound stages this year um, on top of everything else that the organization does. So we have all of that. Um, again, each one of these, um, sorry if I feel, if I'm going too fast, tell me. <laughs> no, I, I have a question though. Yes. Um, did Scott and Mark, did you see the results of a, of a survey of people on Main Street about the results from last summer? No. Okay. Because that was something we specifically asked for that we wanted to see before we would give any approval to doing what we did last summer again because we know that it impacted different people on Main Street differently. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to have some idea of how well it worked so, or how well it didn't work. Yeah, overall, I would say according to this survey, it's like 50-50. Um, and I think a lot of them wanted to see it move to once a month uh, versus every week. So we, in the RFP, it was stated that we needed to fulfill the once a month. So we'll give once a month a try, reevaluate that survey and stakeholders, and. Well, I think we would still like to see that survey. We'd like to see the results of it. They have it. Yeah. <laughs> That's not us. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we didn't do the survey. I yeah, think. we just yeah, you guys picked, it up, picked it up. Picked um, it up. On this proposal is all of, again, the marketing strategy and what we can do if we have more sponsorships, if, where our expenses go and things like that. Um, and I think that takes us through the first few months of the year, our first few events. And then we, you know, we really bulk up in the fall and winter. It's kind of where the bulk of our things go. Balloon Fest and the holiday events and things like that. So, mm -hmm. and did you guys also get a copy of the RFP and our proposal and all that? Did we get that? I don't remember no. seeing it. No, no. Okay, no. you might want it. I, normally, we get that. So yeah, <laughs> I'd like a copy of that also. So yeah, I think the intent with, with you guys coming today was to kind of present the first couple of seasons or season and a half of events. Yep. Which are basically what was included in the proposal. Maybe a little bit narrowed down, obviously, working with CAM and maybe some of the dates. Yeah. Like, they changed it all. Um, but we can certainly share, share the whole RFP with you. But that was the intent of it, to bring it to you when it was pretty much in a final draft as to what you're doing. Yeah. Make sure we get your input early so that we avoid any you know, issues or any questions or help from the deal to address. Um, and then just you know, going forward, hopefully, you guys then have the, the confidence of the councils. Well, for me, anyway, the closures over the summer, I think it's really important that we have minimal impact financially on the businesses. And if that, if we have even half of the businesses are seeing a drop in what their income is because of it, then we got a question, what are we doing? So I love the idea of, of street closures, but if it's negatively impacting that many of our businesses, not to say that that's the cause, I, but I, I haven't we, seen the survey, so I don't know what the 50-50 is. We agree. And so. we would, you know, that's, like, the goal is to only increase business for them. And if, if right. we're doing something that decreases business on a weekly or monthly basis, then we don't want to be doing that. So right. um, we're hoping that just one Saturday a month won't. Um, and collaborating with other places like like the alumni and with CAM. Um, CAM is, is, it a, is that something I can disclose yet or no? I think you can talk about it on Facebook and, and, and whatnot. Okay. <laughs> like overstep. Wait, what are you looking at? That's fine. Um, Cam is planning a three-on-three -three basketball tournament, which for me screams lots of parents, lots of family, lots of right. people eating, lots of people checking out shops that they normally probably wouldn't even give a second thought of going into. So the collaboration piece as much as possible I think is very big. Um, and it also gives an added benefit um, not benefit, it, it gives an additional um, stream of marketing that we might not tap into normally. Where, like the SUNY Alumni Association, for example, they have contacts that we would never reach. So them being able to, or, you know, advertise that there's this street closure and these things happening, it's going to be a bigger draw. Hmm? Where's the tournament? On Main Street. Right on Main Street. Right, right on Main Street. Street. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say if it was up at SUNY or up at Hartwick, then 
I wonder how much we're going to benefit. But no, if it's on Main Street, then yeah. Great. And then we're not also when we collaborate with that, we're not closing the street a second time. Right. It's still just the one Saturday, so we just have to talk with Kano, which I can't foresee them saying no to extra advertising <laughs> <laughs> and extra help. So um, other than that, we only have the May and August, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah, I do just follow up. I don't know who this should should. Yeah, here, but in terms of you said 50 50 was kind of the, the breakdown about the, the folks' response to the survey whether they like to have this, the street closings or not. For those people that were, I uh, did not appreciate, just like to understand what their thinking was, what were some of the comments that you may have seen. So let me. I, I might be able to. That's okay. I was just going to actually correct myself because I did say 50 50, but I lumped negative and business the same as a negative which maybe isn't a negative, but if it didn't right. boost your business, then it wasn't necessarily a boost, right? So um, out of the 27 survey, surveyed people here, uh, 14 said better than normal and 13 said either the same as normal or not as well as normal. So, and the not as well as normal were only four on this sheet. Um, Um, you want me to just read this to you quickly since I talk really fast? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can see a large increase in people coming downtown. I'm only open 10 to 1 on Saturdays, but having more foot traffic downtown is great. It brought down families as a group to mesh with visitors, passerbys, college, college maybes, people just driving for a fun day. It was a strong summer. The first two or three were a bust, but then it improved and became busier. Some people would call and ask if the street was closed and then say, catch you during the week. It seemed to help during the day, but hurt business during dinner time when people pick up their orders. Um, we did terribly, it destroyed our Saturday business. Difficult to gauge since the pandemic, but Saturdays are busy for us. Better than normal, except two Saturdays where there were lots of activities on the street. Then it was worse. Um, there were a few great days, but just as many duds. Um, sorry, lost my place. <laughs> Started out slow, got better, then got better. Not sure if it's due to the pandemic, but usually more tourists doing tasting on Saturdays. We already have extensive outdoor seating. Um, sometimes it seems like the lack of parking and accessibility could be hurting our business. The last few were better than normal with students being back. Um, South Main, I'm on South Main and it uh, street closures don't impact me much. So I don't know if you want to negate that one from the whole process, but, um, uh, but she did comment that some of her customers were frustrated by parking on Main Street. Not she, it, them, they, I don't know who it is. We don't know who they are. So there is kind of an overview. It's pretty 50-50. And it's kind of that way, I would say, for the most part, about the in, in its entirety, is 50-50. Mayor, can you share with us so we can take a look at this? Yeah, sure. So the businesses that it hurt, um, and it did, uh, were the pizzerias. Um, their business model um, just did not work with street closures, as many different things might have been tried to uh, mitigate the issue. It wasn't something that we could fix. Um, all of the restaurants either did well or, or better than well. Um, the, uh, the high end would be wise guys, I suppose. Um, and um, the retail stores did well if they brought stuff out onto the street. Uh, a couple did that and they enticed people in through that, you know, basically expansion of their footprint. But what you, what you need to know is that we have a lot of people who cannot leave their business. We have a lot of single shop owners. And so what they see is what's in front of their door pretty much or just out this side of the other side. Oneonta's Main Street has a huge issue in terms of the vibrancy that businesses can bring to the street between Motor Plaza and um, Ford and Allen, the uh, Ford uh, rather, where you've got um, Community Bank on the far end, City Hall diagonally across the street, and all the way back, we've got Farmers, we've got the, the Java 
uh, island, a lot of empty spaces. The West Cobb lot, the commercial, the, uh, the, the town, the county, rather, building. Uh, a lot of, a lot of either businesses that aren't businesses, services that, you know, basically are closed, empty storefronts. So you've got a long stretch where there's not much you can do except to try to bring something in for a few hours. When we started, the concern was, and I'm pointing to you, Dave, because you were so much a part of that. When we started, <laughs> the, the concern was the farmer's market. Farmer's market moved down to Market Street, and that impacted the, um, the flow of a Saturday morning, where a lot of people have muscle memory around going to the farmer's market, stopping at the Green Toad, maybe at the, at, at the latte, you know, come, you know, spending a little bit of time with one another. That um, went away with the farmer's market moving down to Market Street. It's much more convenient for them, but it disrupted, actually blew away the whole morning, um, you know, routine for a lot of people. So, you know, there are, so what we wound up doing was we wound up putting as many vendors as we could in, that, that's in Muller Plaza to start with to try to mm -hmm. kind of replicate the feeling of that. But the consequence of that was that you really, outside of a couple, three hours, you might be able to bring in a car show or, you know, some other event, barbecue contest, whatever it might be. You really couldn't do much with that stretch. So as the um, events progressed, uh, I believe it was David's idea to move everything out onto the street uh, and fill that space as best we could. Um, people don't always show up when they say they're going to show up, so you go up with the poles. Um, <laughs> but um, but that is a, that is an issue with the street. So uh, basically, the, the folks that had their impact um, be negative were pretty much the pizzerias and those that you know it was kind of a wash. I think it was a wash for roots. Generally speaking, you know, maybe even down. I, I, I don't. You know, if I may speak. Yeah. I, I think that the woman that gave those comments was off in her comment because we, I think we did very well those days. Oh, you did. Well, in any case, um, you know, it was very <laughs> Burlington, Vermont. -esque. Good to know. Yeah. It wasn't really a festival, you know, scenario. Um, again, mainly because you do have that huge expense. That would be wind up being something that's uh, expensive for us. But anyway, that's right. I'm not trying to question the existence of the entire thing. I oh, just sure. want to make sure that what our thinking is might include, uh, address some of the negative impacts if we can. That, that's my question. So maybe perhaps by sharing that survey, we might be able to, to look it over and, and it, you know, maybe make suggestions if there's anything that you saw that might help yeah. out. So that, that, that's my, my reason for asking. Sure. I also think that um, our ability to market the event um, will be a little bit different because we have a group of individuals, a large pool of individuals to put that out to. Um, I mean, our events, and Balloon Fest brings, I'm not saying that the, the summer Saturdays are gonna bring in 1,500 to 2,000 people, but we do have the ability to, to do events like that. So I think that our reach is bigger than other organizations, no offense, please don't take offense. Um, to any, you know, than what we've seen in the past. So hopefully our marketing abilities will help sure. that as well. Right. Scott, do you have any questions at all? No. I do, but I don't know how to phrase it. So bear with me. It's been That's a long time. Give it a shot. You <laughs> um, I'm all behind our downtown businesses and you know part of the sixth board falls with part of the eight board down through there. Some of the other businesses around the city Moyana have asked, you know, we do this for the for the downtown businesses, we kind of get left behind. So I didn't know maybe if there's a way to incorporate those businesses somehow, whether it's like a placemat or some advertising for them saying, hey, you know, when you're visiting, if you know, you're not downtown, here's some other places to, to go visit, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. So, I mean, that was brought up to me. Um, I hope I'm phrasing it better than how they said it to me. So. No, we've heard that. Well, and, yeah, and not the that's last not the last year, that. I did go to a lot of the local businesses and offered them come on down during it. Um, but again, you ran into the, I'm the only one here on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. I can't be there. Mm -hmm. And so we did run into that a little bit last year with trying to get people to come down with part of their store, just even advertising and stuff like that. 
you know, bring a coupon for 15% off, hand it to everybody, and then they go to your store type thing. But a lot of them didn't want to do it because of they don't have the uh, people. Yeah. Um, even like superheroes with jeans, and like, bring your stuff up to Main Street. And they're like, we don't have people to do it. So. I know I'm not having people to do things. So that's <laughs> 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 yeah, we totally understand. Um, that's something that we can we can look into and figure out a way to to make to make it work or or something. Um, if there's like a sixth word day, I mean maybe maybe that needs to happen, right? Like a, like a highlight, you know. Even if it's when we do a West End garage sale, so like you know, there's the the gift to give event right down on the sixth word, and a lot of people do their yard sales and things like that on that day. So I don't know, maybe it's just some way we incorporate ourselves into that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well. I, I don't know. Yeah, this was also business. This wasn't just a sixth ward. There was some fifth ward people that okay. reached out to me when I walked in. And, yeah, that's tough. You know, they say, hey, you're a council member. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just here to get a meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Let's get it. <laughs> so. Yeah, we'll brainstorm. And I think, you know, the way I said a lot of it was just going in when you go, go grab something to eat. They're like, you know, you're doing this for downtown. What about, you know, and I said, I said, you know, I know the people to talk to, so I am. That's why I brought it up. Yep. No, thank you. You got a question? I don't know if there's some way to come up with some kind of a restaurant district or restaurant marketing for the city of Oneana. We tried doing a restaurant week one day and nobody wanted to participate. Well, I don't mean a restaurant <laughs> week, but. Um, like a brochure or. Yeah, even if it's a map, a 3D map of Oneana with all the different restaurants throughout the city of Oneana that, that are maybe larger than the other buildings, so they stand out like some cities do for different yeah. businesses that contribute to the, the marketing of that program. Um, but that's not my area of expertise. Yeah. I know at one point we used to have maps that we'd hand out up at, up at uh, work. Uh, with visiting parents and, and uh, visiting uh, basketball teams and football teams, because you know parents were looking for a place to eat, we'd hand them the map of the city and say, so "Here you go," and you know that was always helpful. So you know, because when you're trying to get directions from certain places, you're like, "I gotta go where?" <laughs> yeah. Right. So. Okay. All right. Any more for? Do you? Okay. I do, but I, I can introduce myself as some other thing. I guess I think because I was interested, I'm, so I'm Emily, I'm on the, I'm the eighth ward council member. Yes. And I just came because I wanted to hear your guys' presentation. Because um, looking at your website, the first thing that kind of came to my mind is that it seems like certain businesses are being promoted because of the fees that they pay. And how could we maybe I, I'm wondering if maybe you would consider changing your strategy a little bit to kind of maybe like promote all of them equally or then maybe some a little more, you know, so that way like it, when you go to Destination Oneonta, you don't think, if you're an outsider, you don't think there's only like the Autumn Cafe and one other business or something. So um, that is why it's important that they all see that RFP. Yeah. It's, 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 it's okay. Um, okay. I, I really yeah. think it's okay. Um, we've actually changed the structure, so now there's an in-kind structure or um, a tier, and then a fifty-dollar tier, and then the hundred and fifty-dollar tier. So you get multiple layers and still have the ability to be included at no cost. Okay, cool. Yeah. So they can let us know that they want to be on it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I think it's more they need to let us know we're not going to go through any on and go to every businesses. There's well, not I mean, enough. Um, but if you guys know, if I'm, someone I'm wants to be on, let them know. Facilitate that. Yes, now. that would be great. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but yes, that is on there to get more, okay. a bigger directory for more going on. <laughs> awesome. Well, good. I appreciate it. I didn't mean to sound. No. <laughs> okay. So Greg will send us the RFP. Yes. Okay. And then Mark, you'll send us the results from okay. the survey. Sure. Okay. Let's uh, thank you for coming. No and you can pass. I did bring cards. Um, Greg, you. Mark, do you want to let them know my information? Yeah. You have all that. Yeah. Um, phone, email, all that. If you guys have ever have any questions, let us know. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, moving on to gear management.
Um, I forwarded, um, and I don't think you got it. I forwarded it too late, so I apologize. The environmental board gave their their recommendation to us about what to do about the deer. Before we get into that, though, I should maybe sure everybody is up to date about the feeding of the deer in the city. Um, I brought to everybody's attention that there was somebody dumping tons of food up on the cow path for the deer. And that happened again the other day. And it was reported to me um, with a person's license plate. Um, the woman was, that was doing this was very free with her information. Um, and um, I reported it on to the police chief who dealt with it. Um, so we shouldn't see this person doing this anymore, but I believe, um, based on what I saw from the photo, there was an awful lot still in the truck. And food had already been put out there, so I think this was happening at multiple locations throughout the city. Um, so my hope is that this person got the message and is not doing that anymore because it doesn't do the deer any favors at all. Um, but the environmental board did have a discussion the other day. Um, they brought uh, Mike Clark and Selena Brandon of the DEC, um, who spoke about um, deer management. And this is actually on um, YouTube, so if, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend going and watching the meeting. Um, and Mark, you were there, so you, know, you already know. Um, but they recommended getting a survey of the community to determine levels of concern and interest in pursuing a deer management program. The DEC can help find a survey template if that's what we want to do. Um, they recommend exploring education uh, and mitigation options to cope with the numbers. One suggestion is a revision of codes to allow, allow higher fences in city, city center yards. Um, and also opening more areas closer to the city for, quote, recreational hunting of non-antler deer. Um, at this point, board members felt that further action on deer management is beyond the scope of their authority, uh, which I, I would agree with. And therefore, it was agreed that we asked, that they asked us to take the lead in continuing to explore the concerns and potential responses. Um, of course, the environmental board will continue to provide input and support as um, deemed helpful. So, um, what are your thoughts about um, putting out a survey or moving forward with this? <coughs> Anybody? Um, I'll, I'll step out there. I'm, I'm not sure what we would accomplish with the survey. Um, I think we need to find some mixed results. I think that there's significant, there's, there's certainly people, and I've heard from many people, that do believe we have a deer problem in the city. Other people don't. Um, I think that we would probably find exactly that. Some people think we have problems, some people don't. One way or another, if, if, we, were, if we determine there's a, a deer problem, then we have to figure out mitigation efforts. Um, frankly, I'd rather kind of look at mitigation efforts from the standpoint of um, it's good that this person's feeding habits have been addressed, but there's others. So we, we know that there are yeah. uh, people that, that uh, feed deers from their home and things like that. I think we need to address that. Thank you for addressing that in your weekly um, talk. But I think we need to really lean on that hard because that, was, that would be a significant thing. Beyond that, I think there's education. We need to educate folks. Um, nothing. There is no such thing as deer-proof plants, and not in this climate, not in this, these winters. They will come in and they'll eat anything, uh, whatever they can, and, and you know, even things that they traditionally don't eat on the coldest of winters, they will. So we have to just recognize that there are certain plants that might keep them at bay for a while, uh, certain evergreens, but there are, are things that they will eat, period. Beyond that, the only other solution then is beginning to get into very costly programs which I think are very contentious. For example, uh, the DEC did, did talk about uh, management through kind of selective kind of bow hunting of, of particular deer. I think that would be a contentious effort, uh, 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 issue here in the city. That there would be a lot of people that would be find that really problematic. I've also got to say, honestly, my own personal opinion, perhaps, and not reflecting the folks I've heard from in my own ward, 
Um, I'm just concerned that we're talking about deer, and meanwhile we have a uh, world that the temperature is, is increasing every day, climate change is on top of us, we've got all kinds of issues. We're talking about this one over here, and there's this huge thing looming on the horizon. I think we're better off focusing on those issues than, than deer issues. That's my own personal opinion. I recognize that not everyone sees that, but I'm just afraid about putting so much time into gear that we don't that we miss some of the bigger issues that we need to address. Uh, but I don't mind putting our efforts into trying to address some of these. Don't feed them. Educate people about what the uh, you know how to gear proof your yard as much as possible. I think that we can put our efforts in there. Anything beyond that, I think, would be just problematic because we we get rid of this group, we feel good about ourselves for two years, and then. Uh, other group decides that it's easy picking in the city and moves on in. And we're going to have to keep this process every couple of years. So we just we deal with it. That's my opinion. So at that uh, environmental board meeting I was at that, um, I volunteered that I was going to be going to the New York Conference of Mayors um, meeting in Albany and uh, with Network of as many mayors as had an issue with beer that I could uh, come across. And I did. That was my icebreaker, frankly, for a lot of conversations with people. Um, I wound up with uh, some, I think, value. I'm not advocating for any position. Um, but I, I did promise that I would bring something back. So the, uh, the, the city the city of Hamilton um, has had a, a tremendous amount of, of success. Um, with their deer population in terms of getting into the deer, I think they might get back about 70%. Um, I spoke with um, the, the, the mayor from Hamilton was not there. I spoke with the mayor of Kimelis, uh, Kimelis who um, then provided me with uh, a lot of good information. It's all kind of sequenced there. That uh, was based on um, their relationship with the city of Hamilton. And uh, the city of Hamilton provided them with a uh, a, a plan, a deer mitigation plan, that they used as a template, and that's included in there as well. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, what the um, city of Cam uh, yeah, the city of Camillus has done, and they apparently are well loved in um, the county of Holland, uh, was to uh, create a small, um, very well vetted, I guess, um, uh, force of four people who, following the leadership of Tom Hart, who is the town supervisor in Camillus, uh, would go out and he said, you know, don't call them hunters. They're not hunters. They're shooters. Um, and they shoot with crossbows at a couple of hundred feet away. They were able to get right up on. And they bring sleds. So he had an expense of uh, about $3,500 in total for um, everything that he needed, including you know, the sleds to be able to pull the deer off without leaving, you know, blood trails on anybody's, um, you know, on any property. There are, you'll see in the package, there um, are all of the rules and regulations that, that they put into place, including at the very end the conversation they had with their lawyer in terms of insurance and, and concerns along the run, those as well. But what they wound up doing, I think they, they pulled 40 deer last year. I think it cost them about oh, I don't know, um, just a few thousand dollars for everything. Um, there's a program uh, that uh, is kind of the, the standard that people will go to if they're trying to have deer um, culled, um, that is uh, very expensive. Uh, and and um, they, um, they actually shoot um, with, with rifles. Silence. You know, you don't really want to have a projectile, you know, if you can avoid it in any case, but um, they go to a crossbow in Camillus for the, the rationale being that that's a sure um, kill, that they're not looking at maiming a deer that wanders off, is injured, and is wandering around. Um, and um, they have cameras that they've stationed in various places that um, they'll leave, you know, feed out, and uh, they'll be notified, and they'll they'll engage, um, and all of that's in that package. Um, so for what it's worth, um, they're dealing with it. I'm not advocating for it, but, um, but I feel like it's got, now there's some valuable information there. And he, um, as well as a float, there's a, um, an Excel sheet in there as well that, that um, 
in the very tail end of the package that talks about how many deer are taken, what type of deer are taken, when they're taken, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's also the city of Clark. Mark, Mark I've got to stop you. Sure. We've, we're on topic one of three topics. And we have um, this is my last right? No. Um, I need to stop you, partly because we still have to decide what we want to do. Certainly. And I think we should take our time to read through this. Absolutely. I'm not happy. Uh, but I think, I think we need to decide what direction we want to take. And I agree with everything you're saying. There are definitely, that's one avenue to go, and there's lots of different ways to do sure. what you're talking about. Um, but I, I, I feel like we're putting the cart before the horse. Yeah, again, I'm not advocating for it. Uh, I understand that. Um, but I, I want to hear from Scott your thoughts about this, and then I'll give my thoughts about which direction I think we should go. Uh, I'm going to kind of agree with Mark on, on a lot that uh, I don't think we'll get much from a survey. I think we kind of already know that Center City has an issue. Um, and down in my ward, they're like, we like our deer, you know. So, you know, I think different different parts of the city are going to have different issues. Um, and, I, and I also agree with you. I think we need to come up with a plan on and which way we want to go with this, and how much can we afford, or how much resources can we put towards it um, with everything that we're facing. And the, other, the only other thing I'm looking at with, with deer management, I'm kind of going to the other side of things. <clears throat> I'm looking at potential health issues with so many deer, with uh, ticks and, and, and you know things that can be brought into the city. So, um, yeah, I think it's something that's worthwhile to look at. But I want to also agree with Mark. I think in, the, in such a big picture, we've got to try to say how much time can we work to do everything that we need to do for the health and safety of the city. Uh, are you saying you want to address the issue or not address the issue? I want to, I think we can address the issue with, with a lot of what Mark said. I think education is a big one. I think that's the first spot that we really should should really try to put our resources in. <clears throat> so, okay. Um, my thoughts on this is I agree about the education. Um, we've already had a Nixel sent out, I believe. Did we have the Nixel sent out? I don't know about the no, Nixel. No, we did not. Know. The environmental board was supposed to write up a yeah. was supposed to write up a statement for us about it, but they did not. So I think we have to write that. So we can have Nixel sent out. The mayor has already put out um, a statement about this. Um, I think there's some way the newspaper too. The way I see this is, for example, just my own yard. Um, I went back there today, and it's just, there's tons of, of deer feces everywhere. And that was not the case when my kids were little and would play in the backyard. Um, just the the enormity of it is, is was kind of staggering to me. Um, but there are still other people that are feeding deer within the city. Um, we've got somebody that I can see just a few doors down that throws food out of the, their balcony. Um, I don't, that being said, I, I don't think, I don't agree that, that this, I mean, yeah, in the big scheme of things, um, I think global warming is a much bigger issue than deer management. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't address it, because that's the, right. that's the most immediate thing in people's face. It's also an, an immediate safety issue for the feces, deer ticks. And if we don't get a handle on this, we're going to start having um, accidents within the city more than we do now. And what if we have issues where if we do have coyotes in New York State, if they say, see that their dinner is down in the city, um, the last thing I would want to see is a, a deer that's hit, and you got a coyote that comes down to get his feast within the city. So I don't think we can ignore this. And I also don't think that education is enough. Um, it's a start. I mean, we talked about the, that at the environmental board, that that's a good way to start. Um, I'm actually leaning toward everything that Mark is saying, and what I've read is that what's the most successful programs are bait and shoot, where they, they set up shop at the outskirts of the city. They don't go in the neighborhoods. Um, and the most successful way to do it is with shooting, not bow and arrow or um, the uh, uh, 
what you call it. Unless you unless your aim is really really good, um, you're not going to kill them right there. And so what some cities have done is they it might be the edge of a park on the outskirts of the city. They bait there, brings the deer in, and they they shoot them there. Um, I thought I thought the question was more what what you wanted to do tonight, and I was saying education because I haven't read through this yet, so I don't know. Like really, what the next step should be? Right. right? Well, well, I agree with everything. Why don't we read here? So why don't we read through this? Um, this isn't a new problem. It's just been a growing problem, mm -hmm. and it certainly was a problem ten years ago. But I still see it still being a problem now. So why don't we take the time to look through this packet with what the mayor gave us, and we put it on the agenda for the next meeting? Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, next is um, I'm going to go right to C, which is the housing studies review. Did everybody get the um, the email from Danny Lappin from the housing commission? Do you have that, Mark? Yeah. Okay. Scott, did you get that? Yes. Okay. Um, and this is their only a draft. I haven't heard from Danny since he sent this out. Um, any thoughts on this yet? You probably won't hear anything from Danny since he resigned from the Housing Commission. Oh, that's true. Maybe <coughs> Scott remind me who the new chairs or co chairs with Florida? Well, Ed May. Uh, Ed, Ed May. Dan Lappin and Ed May. So we haven't had a meeting since. Okay. So. I guess I'm not, I wasn't sure what um, he was looking for from us when he sent this out. He just wanted, I, I believe the intention was this is what we're working on because this was a bunch of um, studies that were done before the housing commission got put together. And then they just put everything into a big spreadsheet. And I don't know, Steve, I don't know if you got anything else on that? I don't know what he was really getting at. So we went through all of the items that were in the existing housing study reports. And we basically determined which of those items that either the city had accomplished or was in progress on, or we had a couple that were defined as kind of out of the scope of like the city's, you know, uh, kind of wheelhouse like the city has certain tasks that we do and then certain tasks that kind of the private sector does uh, like one of the things I could think of off the top of my head was educating homeowners on you know like credit how credit systems work well that's not really a city process so we kind of took those items out and said you know maybe that's something we could team with like a bank or we could provide you know a flyer for but they were kind of outside of like the scope of what the city really does as part of like our, fu our governmental function. So after going through that spreadsheet, we kind of provided the Housing Commission with kind of where each of these items were, uh, where we see them going in the future, uh, and how the Housing Commission might uh, assist the city in kind of building some of these ongoing processes <clears throat> out or assisting the city in achieving some of the you know, prior pre-existing housing study reports goals. So then Danny provided kind of a written up, you know, summary of that conversation we had and kind of that, uh, you know, those goals and how he saw the Housing Commission assisting the city in accomplishing them. I think what he's kind of looking for is direction from the council or from, you know, this uh, quality of life as to like how the housing commission should move forward. I think the problem with that is now that Danny's not on the housing commission, uh, that commission could go in an entirely different direction because it now has a new chair. Yeah. So I, when I saw this on the agenda, I mean, I, I can answer questions about kind of what they're doing or what they've come up with, but I mean, it's kind of this whole committee could go in a different direction. Yeah, because they did break up into, <clears throat> and they worked with Steve and Greg and Judy. Judy, I think, Jay once in a while. 
on some of the stuff, and they were broken up into groups and stuff, and then but the report never came back. So that's why I'm Greg and Steve right here are probably your best resources, and not be on what they were what they were doing and, and what they were talking about, because nothing came back to the to the commission as a whole yet. But what you know what they were trying to get to the to the accomplishments. Yeah, I think my understanding the last thing that happened really was with our meetings with uh, Danny, Danny and Jerry too. And from that came this. Entry. So this is, I believe, what was intended to be. Right. So is this still a draft form, or is this something that's been accepted and kind of the, the, the housing commission is putting forward? I wasn't at the last house. Yeah. So I, I think the the problem that you're you're going to run into with this was. The last housing commission, Danny Lappin wasn't at the commission at the meeting. Right. Uh, Ed May was voted in as a co-chair, and then Danny Lappin immediately resigned. So this draft, I mean, it might it, it might be dead in the water. I mean, I don't know moving forward how much this drafted summary of our feedback will be part of the housing commission's processes or what they want to. Yeah, the last housing commission only lasted 27 minutes. Yeah, they, they voted in a, a new chair, and then that was pretty much the end did, of the business. Did Danny resign completely from the board? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Maybe maybe we want to reach out to Ed May and the housing commission to, know, to find out if this is still a draft. Are they still working on this? Are they making changes? Is this, like, where are they going with this? Yeah. That sounds fine. And I, I'd like to propose that we keep housing agenda on our agenda all the time. And to me, this is, this is an important agenda item and that we want to address it in some way, shape, or form uh, uh, consistently. Perhaps we don't have any updates, but I just don't want to lose any forward momentum we're able to get, which is why I was happy to see, at the very least, some draft recommendations. It seems like they need to be flushed out a little more, but at least the conversation could begin. I think that's important. We, we obviously know we have a problem. Tonight, today, this afternoon, we heard from different folks uh, in the manufacturing fields throughout this area, and that was one of the things that, in my mind, is we have another housing issue, which we know that it was reinforced again and again and again. So I think we want to keep this front of mind and really work really closely with, and I'm glad, Scott, that you're here, work closely with the Housing Commission so that we're not letting things sit idle or just kind of sit without having action, that we need to keep the discussions here, that we can then move them out to where they need to be appropriate, whether it's you know, working with, with code enforcement or whether it's working with legislative, whatever it might be, or working with the economic committee, whatever it might be, how we are able to take these ideas and make them into actions. So. I do know the one thing that they did bring up was they didn't know if it would be feasibly possible because of the way our committees are and with the open meetings law and stuff was to have a meeting with the finance committee and with this committee because everybody's looking at housing and having just a general overall meeting of what we're trying to accomplish, the end games, the everything that's going on, the studies, and have that open fluid conversation. Well, we can call a special meeting. That would be a special meeting of the council, essentially, with that number of people. Yeah. Um, but we could call a special meeting of the council. We just have to give notification properly ahead of time. Um, and the purpose of having a meeting. So, I yeah, they didn't know if that was anything that the council would be interested in or not. So, you know, that was one idea that they brought up. And, and I said, well, you know, the good thing is, is the two committees you're talking about, I sit on those two committees, but also then we got the economic committee. They're like, well, maybe they should be involved as well because you got three different committees that are trying to push the same thing, trying to push for the, to get to the, to the same conclusion of how we can get housing. So, I mean, if, I, I'm, I'm all good for having a special meeting, having them come forward, and, and have the other committees there, and we can just. I think if up. I think if you could go back and tell them what they should do is send a recommendation, um, outlining exactly what they're looking to accomplish at a meeting, and send in a request to have a special meeting of the entire council, send it to the mayor, and then the mayor can um, work with the, the council to establish a date of when we can have that meeting. We just have to make sure that it's um, it is proper notification to the city so anybody can attend. Okay. Yep. 
I'll, I'll bring it up, like I said, and like Steve said, the whole committee can go to a different direction now. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I think that's. Had first meeting yet, I think so. that's kind of yeah. There hasn't been a meeting since Danny has left, so that could really impact how this committee works. Hopefully, we'll we won't sit idle too long. This is really important commission to see it moving. Yeah. I don't think it's going to sit idle. I think it's just we're sitting idle until we get the first meeting since the resignation came. And then we're going to, and there's, there's been stuff on the, on the back side. I know it has made, made a couple phone calls to people. And, so the commission's still working. So it's, it's not like it's a sitting idle. I don't want to make it sound like that. And we just haven't had the first meeting so, since everything went down. Well, it is 6 o'clock. Um, I think the, uh, the last topic, if you guys don't mind, I think we should table it for the next meeting and discuss it then. And I apologize for this meeting running all the way. This is my fault. I got here late. Apparently, I forgot I was on the 